hello guys welcome back to a to z dentistry and our today's topic is fenestration and dehiscence so without any further delay let's get started so today we will be discussing about fenestration and dehiscence under the following heads introduction definition clinical features histological features diagnosis treatment planning and differences between fenestration and dehiscence so coming to the introduction basically fenestration and dehiscence are two similar conditions of the tooth and these are similar in terms of the bone loss which occurs around the tooth however they can be differentiated by the type of bone loss which is occurring or on the basis of the bone which surrounds the bone loss so what this basically means that fenestration as well as dehiscence are kind of a defect or a condition wherein the alveolar bone is getting lost right in both the conditions there is loss of alveolar bone however we can differentiate these two condition based upon the type of bone loss and the involvement of the bone like which of uh, which part of the bone is getting destroyed based upon these criteria we can differentiate between fenestration as well as dehiscence so moving on to the definition fenestration basically are isolated areas in which the root is denuded of the bone and only a layer of periosteum and gingiva covers the bone right jo surface hoga root ka right as we know that the alveolar bone basically forms a socket into which our tooth is placed now in this condition as it is a bone defect there is loss of the bone itself and only a layer of periosteum which is the outermost covering of the bone and the overlying soft tissue that is the gingiva is present covering the root of the tooth such a defect is known as fenestration the important point to note here is that the marginal bone remains intact in fenestration now let's move on to definition of dehiscence so basically dehiscence are isolated areas in which the root is denuded of the bone and here also the surface of the root is covered by periosteum as well as the overlying soft tissue that is our gingiva but the only important thing and the distinguishing feature between fenestration and dehiscence is that in case of dehiscence the marginal bone is destroyed okay and therefore the defect extends through the marginal bone if you can remember previously we have said that in case of fenestration the marginal bone remains intact however in dehiscence this defect extends through the marginal bone right so there is a greater loss of bone in case of dehiscence now as you can see i have put up a picture over here right so the maxillary canine is demonstrating us nothing but fenestration and in case of lower canine we can see that there is a bony defect which is dehiscence now here in this picture we can clearly appreciate that in case of fenestration the marginal bone is still intact right however in case of dehiscence the defect is extending through and through and it is involving the marginal bone also i hope that you have all understood this concept very well that the differentiating point between these two defect is only the marginal bone in case of fenestration it will be intact and in case of dehiscence there is a complete destruction of marginal bone as well so here i have mentioned some important points right so in this picture i hope you can appreciate of fenestration as well as dehiscence a lot more clearly than the previous one so in case of fenestration we can clearly see that it is a form of localized defect within a alveolar bone right and particularly in this case it is exposing the apical third right it is exposing the apical third of our root and that area is devoid of bone right and however this thing is not involving our marginal bone or our alveolar margin can you see it is extending from the apical third till the middle third but the marginal bone right it is still intact in fenestration now let's see what dehiscence is about right 
so in dehiscence we can see that the defect is extending through and through there is no marginal bone see can we appreciate it yes we can appreciate it that there is no marginal bone there is no bone remaining on the coronal side and the loss of the bone particularly in case of dehiscence is at least 4 mm apical to the margin of this interproximal bone to simplify it further we can remember this as fenestration as it starts with the word f it is foramen like right fenestration starts with an f foramen also starts with an f so fenestration is nothing but a foramen like defect however dehiscence d e h i right so basically d stands for denuded so these are denuded areas which are extended and they extend through the marginal bone so we can just remember it like fenestration uh, it's nothing but a foramen like defect whereas dehiscence these are nothing but denuded areas extending through the marginal bone i hope i have made it a bit simpler for you all so now let's move further so now let's talk something about the etiology as well as the predisposing factors so now there is no particular etiology implicated for these type of bony defects however there are certain predisposing factors now predisposing factors basically mean that these are certain factors which when present might lead to such kind of bony defects more likely like we can see that if such factors are present then they might lead to this kind of condition okay so the most uh, important and the most common type of predisposing factor uh, that has been mentioned in literature is the prominence of root contours and this holds particularly true in case of our canines right as we know that canines have a very prominent root contour right these have the longest root strongest or uh, teeth right in the arch and they have a very prominent type of root contour in the first picture here we can appreciate that the maxillary canine has a very prominent uh, type of root contour and particularly because of this prominence such defects occur in canine right the next pre predisposing factor here is malposition of the tooth now malposition anywhere right in the dental arch uh, it's a fact that uh, these kind of defects are more common in anterior teeth however rarely in literature in some cases they have mentioned about such defects in posterior teeth as well so if at all there is any malposition of the teeth right so what would happen is that obviously if the wrong tooth is placed at the wrong area that means it has occupied a wrong socket as well so in such cases because of the contour of the root is not in sync with the type of the bone which needs to be there and circling the particular type of tooth fenestration and dehiscence are more commonly seen in malapos tooth the last predisposing factor is labial protrusion of the root right now when if at all a uh, root of the tooth is more prominent on the labial side we know that the bone is a bit thinner on the labial side as compared to that of our palatal side so obviously it undergoes resorption at a faster rate and if at all a root already has a kind of labial bulge or a labial protrusion it can lead to fenestration or dehiscence now all these defects can occur singly and otherwise the, these defects in combination with a thin bony plate might lead to fenestration or dehiscence and also single handedly also a thin bony plate might predispose to this kind of defects okay so here we are finished with the predisposing factors please remember that these are not the etiological factors and up till now no particular etiological factor has been implicated for such bony defects however these are certain important predisposing factors for fenestration and dehiscence moving on to the clinical features now the first and the most important point is that what is the prevalence right and how frequently are the teeth affected so such defects occur approximately in 20% of the teeth and these are frequently bilateral okay 
now this occur more often on the facial bone than on the lingual bone as we have already previously discussed that the labial protrusion of the root is an important predisposing factor for fenestration and dehiscence so obviously this kind of defect are more likely to occur and involve the facial bone than the lingual bone now the most common type of teeth which are affected by this defects are the anterior teeth because see when we discussed previously about the predisposing factors mostly if we think about it these factors are more commonly present in the canine and canine is our anterior teeth so you can remember it like that as it is more common in the canine so anterior teeth are more commonly affected than the posterior teeth these are only uh, three or four types of clinical features have only been mentioned in the standard books so i have put up this only moving on to histological features now only one histological feature has been mentioned in the text that is there is a microscopic evidence of lacunar resorption right and this kind of uh, lacunar resorption may be present at the margins of the bone now here in the first picture what i'm trying to show you is that there is a bone loss right now this is not the type of bone loss which is seen in fenestration and dehiscence this is severe periodontitis right radiographically i have just put it up this image for your reference so basically there is a bone loss right as we have seen in previous pictures and histologically when we look at it we can see that there is active bone resorption going on especially at the bony margins there are active osteoclasts right which are destroying the bone and i will again repeat it that in case of fenestration the marginal bone will remain intact however the resorption will continue further and it will also involve the marginal bone in case of dehiscence so only a single histological feature i hope you guys remember this well so now let's move on to the diagnosis what if uh, you suspect such type of a case maybe in your clinic or while doing patient in your practice so how would you diagnose right so basically <laughs> this is very important right please pay attention here so fenestration and dehiscence cannot be identified clinically or radiographically as previously also i have told you that i have put up the picture however this that picture didn't really indicated these defects as this cannot be seen clinically or can be diagnosed radiographically the only way to encounter such defect is during any periodontal surgery wherein we are completely uh, exposing the root surface right then only then we can identify such defect otherwise it is not possible for us to distinguish them clinically however uh, there is one another method to identify it that is we can identify dehiscence not fenestration but only dehiscence by probing by means of williams graduated probe as you can see here in this picture right so previously i have told you that the loss of the bone is at least 4 mm apical to the margin of interproximal bone so based on this fact we when uh, while we are probing a tooth right so in that case if we see that there is a bone loss which is 4 mm apical to the margin of the bone then we can say that this particular case is of dehiscence so there is no uh, particular way to diagnose fenestration per se uh, rather than a pedon rather than during any pedontal surgery but in case of dehiscence by sound clinical knowledge we can at least suspect a given case of for such kind of defect while probing if we see that uh, there is bone loss right which is at least 4 mm apical to the margin of our interproximal bone then definitely we can have a differential diagnosis of dehiscence so i hope you understood that the diagnosis part is a bit tricky here there is no particular test or any clinical method to diagnose that condition this is because we cannot see the alveolar bone clinically right it is always covered by a layer of 
of a soft tissue and we have already seen that by definition there is loss of the bone however the periosteum that is the outermost covering of the bone as well as the overlying soft tissue of a gingiva is intact therefore there is no way clinically to see such condition only when we expose a flap during a pedontal surgery or by careful probing we can diagnose fenestration and dehiscence now let's move on to the treatment part uh, now if you all refer to karanza which is our standard pedontology textbook for final year then the treatment part is not really given in that book especially in the chapter of uh, alveolar bone that is the tooth supporting structures but uh, in this video particularly i am focusing on the treatment part because whenever you are writing a short answer question or you are attempting a long answer question it is very important that you present your answer under certain subheads I always try to make a uh, videos in that format only and I hope that you uh, try to write your answers in your exams in this format only so uh, an answer can never be complete without the treatment planning so if uh, this question is asked to you for a short answer question then you can just uh, write the treatment in headings you need not write in detail and if at all this is asked as a long answer question then definitely you can you know extend your treatment part you can write it in detail so let's get started with the treatment planning so basically as we know that it is a bone defect we have lost certain amount of bone here so obviously like what would be our treatment plan even a lay man can answer this question that agar bone nahi hai to kuch aur laga do right replace kar do usko so yes uh, that uh, here the role of regeneration and reconstructive techniques come into play right so now as bone nahi hai wahan par so we need to add a bone now you cannot really you know remove a bone and add it directly right so here we'll take help of our bone graft right uh, you can learn about this chapter in detail uh, from your textbook itself or i'll be making a video uh, on the type of bone graft sometime later so now just to give you a brief overview about uh, the regeneration and reconstructive techniques most commonly what we do is whenever uh, there is a bony defect there is a loss of bone obviously we put up uh, some bone graft there now bone graft can be of many types right uh, we'll study that in detail in some other video uh, but for now uh, just remember that we'll put up some kind of bone graft here so that we make up for the lost bone right so here the most common type of allograft which we use is dfdba and fdb which is nothing but our freeze dried bone allograft that is fdba and demineralized freeze dried bone allograft that is dfdba so basically these are the most common type of allografts which we use apart from it uh, we can use certain xenografts basically these are uh, derived from bovine bone we can use hyaluronic acid we can use tricalcium phosphate so these are different kinds of bone grafts which we commonly use uh, for treatment of such kind of defects now i have put up two very nice pictures here right so in the first picture you can see that a bone graft is in place and in the next picture we have sutured after the flap after placing our bone graft for healing to take place so now let's move on to another technique which is most commonly performed for the defect that is our gtr guided tissue regeneration now guided tissue regeneration as the name itself is a regenerative technique so i have put up uh, the picture of the procedure here so in the first picture that is a right we have given our three basic type of incisions and we have now encountered our bone here on the label aspect you can see that there is a loss of the bone right now in the b figure we are placing our graft here right so bone nahi hai jaisa maine pehle kaha tha to wahan kuch dalna hai in order to fill the defect so here we are placing our graft right in the third picture what we are placing is our membrane that is our gtr membrane 
now uh, these come in two forms that is biodegradable as well as non biodegradable we'll learn about it uh, in another video but for now just remember that we are placing a graft then we are placing our membrane and then we are again suturing the flap back now this is a very common technique right gtr it is performed for a variety of condition and bony defect is like um you know um these are very common type of defect now not only this but there are other kinds of bony defects and for the treatment of the same we usually employ the gtr technique that is our guided tissue regeneration now here the significance of placing membrane is that we need cells from the gingiva and the epithelium right from the connective tissue we need the cells actually we need the cells which are more or less similar to the type of cells which were previously present so by placing a membrane what we are doing is that we are basically warding off the cells which are not required and we are encouraging the cells uh, that we want to colonize that particular area and form the type of tissue basically to form the gingiva or the gum tissue which has been lost due to periodontal breakdown now let's come to the center stage of all this drama like why we need to know about this defect why we need to study these you know so basically the significance of these defects lies in the fact that these are important because they may complicate the outcome of any periodontal surgery as we know that whenever we uh, do any kind of periodontal surgery one of our aim is that we need uh, to regain the lost bone particularly in case of uh, bony defect and in case of advanced severe periodontitis we need that we regain the lost bone so that at the end of the treatment our patient can live with intact teeth as we know that whenever there is a loss of the bone mobility is a sign which we can clinically appreciate so one of the aims of periodontal treatment is that we need to regain the lost bone then we have further aims such as we need to get back the lost attachment apparatus but as far as fenestration and dehiscence is concerned we can say that we need to regain the lost bone so uh, therefore whenever uh, we are undertaking any kind of periodontal surgery and we encounter such kind of defect so these might complicate our existing case of periodontitis uh, like uh, if at all it is a case of general periodontitis then we know that already uh, there is a loss of the bone and in combination uh, with that if we have such defect also then the prognosis greatly suffers in this case as we have to uh, undertake like a very complex surgery as well as we need to have more amount of bone graft right we need to perform a major surgery we need to uh, place graft in case uh, there is a generalized bone loss which is a common uh, finding in periodontitis as well as we need to uh, give particular attention to this kind of defect we need a greater coverage in this kind of defect especially in case of dehiscence so now let's talk about the differences right or uh, the most common question which is asked in our exams as a short answer question so uh, there is only a single difference uh, which is the most important difference and you can also say that in in a way it is only the chief difference uh, between fenestration and dehiscence it is that in case of fenestration the marginal bone is intact or the alveolar margin is intact however in case of dehiscence there is a complete destruction of the marginal bone now i have told you a mnemonic previously to remember this is that fenestration is a funnel shape defect and dehiscence it is nothing but denudation of the marginal bone entirely right along the roots entirely so here i have put up two pictures right so in the first picture we can see that uh, in case of dehiscence right which is present in our central incisor one one right uh, the marginal bone is getting completely involved here there is a very little amount of bone which is remaining here and we can also appreciate it that uh, the bone loss here is you know not restricted only to over tooth of interest or rather it is extending all over so might be that this is a case of general periodontitis and in combination of dehiscence as well 
so here uh, as in the previous slide we have discussed about the importance so here is the importance right so in such cases we need to have coverage of uh, pertaining to periodontitis initially then also we have to give particular attention to dehiscence as well here now in case of premolar we can see there is a fenestration right and in the first picture it is seen in relation to canine we can see that it is essentially a funnel shaped defect wherein our alveolar margin is still very intact right so very little amount of bone coverage here is required the prognosis is better for fenestration uh, rather than for dehiscence because in dehiscence there is a major loss of the bone which is occurring however in case of fenestration uh, we ha will have to take certain additional steps in our surgery but rather the bone loss is a little less severe therefore a better prognosis can be extended now whenever we are attempting any question uh, pertaining to the differences we'll always start with the definition right then uh, we'll highlight our major and the only difference here that as fenestration is limb does not involve the marginal bone however in dehiscence it will definitely extend to the marginal bone one more difference here we can uh, mention is that the bone loss is less severe in case of fenestration however it is very extensive in case of dehiscence right uh, and if at all uh, you have been asked the common features for both of them then the clinical features and which we have discussed previously as well as the predisposing factors the diagnosis and the treatment part also remains greatly same for both of this condition and the difference uh, like majorly is only one pertaining to a marginal bone so here in the next picture we can again appreciate fenestration here now oh, i hope that you would all have noticed up till now the defect are largely li limited to anterior teeth that was one of our clinical feature and second one is that these are mostly bilateral now i couldn't get an image where i could show you bilateral but here we can see that in this case it is limited to our anterior teeth and canine is involved that is again it is the longest most strongest tooth with very prominent root contour so prominent root contour was one of our predisposing factor which can be clearly seen in this case is that there is a classic funnel shape defect right the marginal bone is very greatly intact in this case however the apical third of the root is devoid of any bone that is our fenestration right and in the lower thing right here uh, there is a loss of central incisor that is uh, there is no 4 1 here right the lateral is also in a very bad condition but the defect is extending through and through it is involving a marginal bone also so this defect greatly sums up for what dehiscence basically means so even if you remember this picture in your mind very clearly i think you can write about at least two to three clinical features one or two predisposing factors and obviously the single point of difference which i have repeated several times here so now moving on to the last part this is something uh, which i'm adding uh, from this uh, very video itself and this is regarding exam tips so whenever you have been asked about uh, such question whether as a short answer question or a long answer question first thing is keep your mind calm second thing is try to remember all you know about it and if at all if you don't remember anything then please remember the diagram which i have shown you numerous times in this video so basically whenever we are writing uh, any answer it is always incomplete without any diagram so in this section i'll be talking about two diagrams which you can easily draw in your paper right so this is the first diagram right or uh, this is maxilla and this is showing fenestration as well as dehiscence in single diagram very easy to draw and it can fetch you some additional marks so take a note of it and try to draw uh, this diagram or alternatively you can also draw this diagram this is very easy right the first defect is obviously fenestration the second defect here is our dehiscence so very easy to draw and it will oh, definitely fetch you more marks so whenever this question has been asked either as a long answer or a short answer question just try to draw this diagram it is very simple and it will benefit you right so here we have discussed everything about of fenestration and dehiscence i hope uh, you have understood this topic very well uh, i'll see you next time with some 
or another interesting topics till then bye bye take care